بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور تیدائی ویڈا نیکس ٹاپک دیڈ آئی پریویسلی سکپٹ واز دی فوریر ٹرانسفارم آف پیریارڈک سگنلز اوکی سو as we've seen previously that for periodic signal we have Fourier series and Fourier transform we discussed for non-periodic signals but the thing is that Fourier transform is a general tool it can also exist for periodic signals okay so which means Fourier series is only for periodic signals whereas Fourier transform is only is is is, is for both periodic and non periodic signals is that clear so which means this is a unified framework under the Fourier transform we have a unified framework for both sort of the signals fine uh, now how uh, does it help us so if we have a if we have a periodic signal so its Fourier series exists so we can directly calculate the Fourier transform from that as well this is just a small topic okay let us start it assume by 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 making an assumption that we have Fourier transform that we have an is we have uh, assume assume or consider the Fourier transform is like this uh, wait yes if this is your Omega axis this is your h of j omega the Fourier transform is an impulse located at omega naught and the weight is 2 pi fine so how can I write it I can write it mathematically that assume that my h of j omega is 2 pi delta omega minus omega naught and isn't it like this it is now if this is the Fourier transform we need to know the corresponding time domain signal x of t is unknown fine okay so how do we find x of t x of t we find through the inverse Fourier transform formula so the inverse Fourier transform formula implies what that x of t is equal to what you have a 1 upon 2 pi negative infinity to positive infinity for x of j omega uh, well this is h of j omega x of j omega it doesn't matter okay if I've named it an x or h let me name it as the book has so x anyways it does not matter so uh, this is what x of j omega is what it's a 2 pi delta omega minus omega naught and what do we have an exponential of j omega t d omega now for the integration 2 pi would come outside of the integration 2 pi 2 pi would cancel each other so this would only be equal to uh, a, a, a delta of omega minus omega naught exponential of j omega t d omega now we've seen this again and again through the properties of what uh, this impulse signal that when an impulse is multiplied with another signal in the integration limits negative infinity to positive what do we have the answer to this integration is the second function that is multiplied to the impulse that is exponential of j omega t at the value where impulse is located so impulse our impulse is located at omega naught so which means that our answer to this is this particular thing which means that my x of t my x of t has come out to be exponential of j omega naught t right and have a look for this exponential of j omega naught t what is this signal this is a complex exponential signal what does this represent it represents a sinusoid what category is this this is a periodic signal So which means that we have seen that we have a Fourier transform for a periodic signal as well and we have understood this through this formula. Is it clear through this example? Is it clear? Okay. Now if I say this I took it 
for a basic understanding. If I have for any general signal, for any general signal x of t, periodic signal, for any general periodic signal x of t, what do I have? The Fourier series would exist and how would be the Fourier series representation? This implies that my x of t would be summation k running from a negative infinity to positive a k exponential of j k omega naught t. Isn't it like this? Yes, it is. So, this was a Fourier transform relation, right? Now, we saw it over here that if my x of t was an exponential function that is j omega naught t, the corresponding Fourier transform, the corresponding Fourier transform that is x of j omega was 2 pi delta of omega minus omega naught. But over here, what do we have? We have an AK multiplied with it as well. So now, if you have it like this, if you have an AK multiplied to exponential of J and then K omega naught T, so this the corresponding Fourier transform would be over here in the frequency domain, you also multiplied by the same quantity a k 2 pi delta of omega minus k times omega naught and then if you have the summation involved as well so over here have a look that if you have uh, for any general signal which is like this which means that if you have an x of t is summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity a k exponential j k omega naught t the corresponding Fourier transform x of j omega for any general periodic signal would be what it would be a 2 pi or do we have a summation yes yes so we would have a summation over here as well so the summation would be k running from negative infinity to positive infinity 2 pi a k delta of omega minus k times omega naught and this is what is the Fourier series representation for Fourier transform representation for any general periodic signal and you could see that the Fourier transform of a periodic signal would always exist always uh, uh, always have impulses always it would have impulses and that is it that is it about it that is it about it so which means what could you do it that you can know the Fourier transform of a signal periodic signal by knowing the Fourier series coefficients that are a k and that is it that is it a simple example the book has stated if if x of t is sine of omega naught t so we know that if we can write uh, sine of omega naught t in terms of exponential so we know from the Euler's relation that this would be equal to exponential of j k omega naught t plus no a minus exponential of negative j k omega naught t no k over here exponential of j omega naught t minus exponential of j omega naught t divided by 2j which means that you could have it like this exponential of j omega naught t divided by 2j and then you have a minus exponential of minus j omega naught t divided by 2j so which means that this term corresponds to k equal to 1 this term corresponds to k equal to negative 1 so which means my a1 is 1 upon 2j a1 is 1 upon 2j and a negative 1 is negative 1 upon 2j 
and only these two Fourier coefficient exists. So now we know the Fourier coefficients for a periodic signal. The corresponding Fourier transform would be 2 pi multiplied with this and then you have an impulse located at that value of k. So the Fourier, uh, the, 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 the what plot? The Fourier series plot or that we call the line spectrum is how would it be so it would be like this so I could say the line spectrum if these are my a k this is the k axis this is your a k axis so what do you have you have an a1 is 1 upon 2j at k equal to 1 you have a 1 upon 2j at k equal to negative 1 you have a negative 1 upon 2j and have a look I told you in the beginning as well this is just a simple straight line you don't have to make an arrowhead over here the arrowhead represents an impulse so how would now be the the Fourier transform plot the Fourier transform plot so that would be like this this would now be my omega axis and this would be my x of j omega axis fine so what would we have we have a1 fine so if i put a 1 over here so 2 pi a1 delta omega minus 1 omega naught so it means that the impulse would be located at omega naught right at the fundamental frequency plus omega naught because this shifted minus omega naught units and what would be the weight the weight this is an impulse right this is now an impulse the weight would be 2 pi a1 so 2 pi multiplied a1 is this thing so you have a pi upon j isn't it like this yes it is so this would be a pi upon j fine similarly now you have a negative a1 a is equal k is equal to negative 1 so you have a negative a1 a of negative 1 which means that omega minus of minus omega naught so which means omega plus omega naught plus omega naught means shifted left by omega naught so this would now be located over here at a, a minus omega naught the impulse and what would be the weight again so 2 pi a of minus 1 so this would be a minus pi by j this would be a minus pi by j and that is it that is it so let me see if i have something in the book as well if you if you see so they have written again about the impulse train and the periodic square wave also sine omega naught t uh, yes cos omega naught t so do it yourself for cos omega naught t and the impulse train that is it that is it i don't think i don't think we need to do it if you can do it yourself you know you can do it yourself uh what is it the next is uh, you can do it for cause right you can do it for cause and where is it for the periodic square wave as well you can draw the Fourier coefficient how because you know uh, the 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 what the Fourier series representation that is a k you know so you only need to multiply this by this thing you need to only draw impulses that is it I think I finished this video over here because this was just a small topic this does not need anything maybe we see more examples when I in the next examples video you do it for cause yourself you would have a pi simply right and if you do it for the periodic square wave as well so you would have those impulses and omega naught negative omega 2 omega naught minus 2 omega naught similar that is it that is it for this video i'm ending this over here see you the next video with linear constant coefficient differential equation till then take care of yourself everyone around you do remember me in your prayers goodbye